So when you go to graph polynomials, we know a lot of information right now. Uh, we know how to find the roots and zeros. Um, we can even, if you could, also add a little um, note for number one. Let's also add in this to find the y-intercept. Um, step two is to find uh, the lead term and determine what that tells us about the end behavior. Step three, uh, find where's the function going up and going down. When it is above the x-axis, where is it below the, uh, the x-axis? Um, the positive and negative intervals will be helpful. Um, and three and four kind of go together. We're going to talk about where a graph could have what's called a bounce or a through. Um, so uh, if you know how to put all four of these things together, um, you should be able to find a basic graph of a polynomial. So I'm talking about a rough sketch, nothing fancy, but it'll give us a really good indication of what the polynomial is doing. In a calculus class, uh, we have extra tools to be even more accurate. That's why in this class, our graph is going to be a rough sketch. It's not going to be, you know, perfect. So it's going to be, you know, rough. You can throw it into decimals, what you want to look for uh, after you've tried it yourself to see if your graph is accurate. Are the ends going the same direction? Do I hit the x-axis and the y-axis in the same spot? Do I um, uh, have a bump where I should have a bump? So that's kind of what you can look for. So you can use Desmos to help you. So again, let's uh, go over the steps one more time. Uh, first step is to find the roots or zeros uh, and the y-intercept. Second step is to find the lead term, which will give us the end behavior. Third step, uh, where's the function positive? Where is it negative? Where is it going above the x-axis and below it? And that's going to help us find those bounces and the throughs. Okay. So I'm going to list out these um, steps as we go through each one, okay? So I will list out these steps as we go through the, these problems. Okay, so let's look at our first example. We've got this polynomial. Um, it is in factored form, which is the way we really want it to be. So we could also add a little 1a factor when possible, okay? And then b, uh, once it's factored, we're going to find the roots. Okay, so um, uh, how do, what do we mean by the roots? The roots or the zeros are where the function <laughs> equals zero. So uh, part B basically is where x minus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2 equals zero. Now, to do that in factor form is really super nice because all we have to do is we have to just split that apart. There's something called the zero product property that if it's in factored form, the zeros are just this one could equal zero or this one could equal zero or this one could equal zero. It's a very nice thing. So it's just where does x minus 3 equal zero, x plus 1 equals zero, or x minus 2 equals zero. So a very, very nice, consistent sort of pattern. Okay. You will notice that it always become the opposite of what we see because like in the first one there, we got to add 3 to both sides. The second there, there, we have to subtract one. The third one there, we've got to add two to both sides. So we found the roots, but I also want to take the time and I want to find the y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept? Well, you're just going to plug in zero. So if I plug where the x's are sitting, if I plug in zero, I get negative three times positive one times negative two or six. So technically right now, I have four points. I know that it hits the x-axis at positive 3, negative 1, and 2. I know that it hits the uh, y-axis at uh, 6. So I know a lot of things in this very first step. Okay. Second step. Let's talk about the lead term. Now I'm going to always abbreviate that LT so you'll know uh, lead term just means Remember the term with the highest power. So if we just pull out the x's only, that's going to be, the lead term is going to be x times x times x or x cubed. So if we pull out the x terms only and multiply them all together, 
that will result in our lead term. Because if we were to FOIL it, that would be the multiplication that would give us that. That means that our degree, which we usually abbreviate with an N, is three, which is odd. So what we know about a polynomial with an odd degree on it is that if the coefficient is positive, the left end goes down and the right end goes up. Now, there's going to be some bumps in between, um, but I know that the left end goes down and the right end goes up because of the fact that it is a cube. Now let's talk about where it's positive and where it's negative. So if we put those zeros, uh, those roots we found, on a number line, we're just going to put a little simple number line right here. We're going to put those in least to greatest order. So correct number line order. I'm not worried about spacing. I'm just given a little number line for a least to greatest order. Everything that is under the x-axis or going downward, I am going to color in red. No big deal. It's just I'll try to be consistent with that so we have that visual. I know that the left end is under. And then I'll put anything that's above it, and the right end is above. And we are going to be hitting the x-axis in those three spots. So if we think about what's happening, we really have to check, well, what happens here? Do we have a bump above or do we have a bump below when we draw it? And so I also need to check here, do we have a bump above or do we have a bump below? And that's where number step four kind of goes along with it, is do we bounce at that location or are we through that location? The locations I'm talking about are 3, negative 1, and 2. If that quantity had an even power on it, we will bounce at that location. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, in the original structure, if any of these had a 2 or a 4 or a 6 power on them, we would bounce at that location. All of these powers currently are a first power, odd powers. All odd powers mean that we must go through these locations. We must go through those locations. So let's think about it. We know this is below. I got to go through it. Come back down, go through it. Come back down, go through it. So I know that it kind of does an alternating pattern. It is above here, and it is below there. Okay. Now, we have a lot of information. Step five, uh, we may need some extra points. Only if we're unsure. You don't necessarily, I didn't include that step five because uh, we might not need any, okay? But let's put all this information now down on our graph. So I'm going to pick this up for a minute. I'm going to try. Sorry. Just so we have it for the closer to our picture. Okay. So now we've got this beautiful uh, information. What do you do? Well, we kind of follow the steps that we just took, I think is a really good rule of thumb, okay? Uh, we factor to find the roots. So let's put the roots on the graph. So we're gonna hit the graph at three, at negative one, and at two. The next thing we found was the y-intercept. We hit the y-axis at the point um, zero, six. So put that on there. We know that the left end goes down and the right end goes up. So that is the farthest, farthest intercepts over the leftmost end. We hit it and go down. The rightmost zero, we hit it and go up. Okay. 
we have to go through this point, hit it, through this point, hit it. The thing we are not sure about and cannot really predict without plugging in points is how high those bumps go. And I do not care. You want to plug in extra points so your bump is of a more accurate height? Plug in points. Do I care? No, make a bump. Okay, so we know we have a positive bump here because I had to go through it and a negative bump here. So through this point, up, through this point, up. These points here are called turning points. If we have a lead term with a power of three or a degree of three, the most turns we'll ever have is two. The most places we'll ever hit the x-axis is three. So uh, that means we could turn twice. That's the most that could ever happen in a cubic function. So that's what I mean by a rough sketch. Now, if you were to open up Desmos and type in our function f of x, equals the quantity of x minus 3 times the quantity of x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 2, you should get relatively that. Will their bumps be higher or lower? Maybe. Again, don't care. Okay, let's do it again. Now, for this problem, we're going to go right down the list. The first thing I want to find, is it in factored form? Check. I didn't have to do that. They were kind to me. They have factored it for me. Second thing, what are the roots? Now the roots are easy. All we're going to do is take x minus 2 squared uh, and x plus 3 and x minus 1, set them equal to 0. We're going to split it all apart. We're going to get x minus 2 equals 0. I guess I don't need the parentheses. Why don't I need the parentheses? Well, if I square root 0, I'm still going to get 0. If you want to put that parentheses there, I will not. It's not wrong, but you'll just square root it and the square root of zero is zero and you get it without it anyway. But if you put it there, feel free. It doesn't hurt anything. So we get roots of two, negative three, and positive one. And then let's find that y-intercept. Remember, we plug in zero. So we get um, negative two squared. You have to include the square there, of course. Uh, three and negative 1. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 times negative 1 is negative 12. So that is our y-intercept. So we've got four nice points. Now let's talk about our lead term. Just like the fact when I actually plug in points I have to include the squared, the lead term includes the square. So it's going to be the first x squared, the second x, and the third x. So I actually have four x's. So when our degree is four, both ends, when the front coefficient is positive, have to go up. So the left goes up and the right goes up. If, that, if there was a negative sitting right here or in one of these, actually it would flip both ends going downward. So now we know our lead term and our end behavior. So now we need to think about a plus minus chart. So let's make a little number line to kind of hold our information. If we put on our zeros from uh, least to greatest, we have negative three, one, and two. Now we know that the um, left end is going up and the right end is going up. We know that our graph hits zero at these three points. Now let's think about if we tested a number between uh, negative three and one. Zero is a number between negative three and one. We've already tested it, right? It's a negative number. It's under the x-axis. So let's color this section red. Now, let's think about a number between 1 and 2. 1 1.5 is a perfect example. If you plug in 1.5 to our function as a test value, 
So what's happening? Let's test this sucker. Let's see what's happening. So I'm going to plug in 1.5. So let me do that for you. Hopefully you know how to plug in uh, things. You do have to include the square. And if you do plug in that, you get a very small fraction, but it is po uh, positive. You get 0 0.5, 0 0.5625. So it is a positive number. So let's, uh, color that little section positive. Now, why do we have a positive section sitting right next to a positive section? So let me kind of graph a little idea of what's happening. So this section here is above the x-axis. We're going to hit this and go through it, come back around, hit this, go through it, come back around, hit this, and we're going to bounce. So it's going to end up looking like a lopsided W. So that brings us to step four, bounce versus through. Let's look at our powers. This one has an even power on it. That was a factor at two. At x equals two, we have to bounce off that location. But the other ones, x equals negative three and x equals one, we're going to go through those locations. Now, why is that? Well, let's think about a quadratic or parabola. It kind of forms like a little parabola right there on the squared portion. Because on one side, it's going to be above the x-axis. It's going to continue. When you square a negative, you get a positive. When you square a positive, you get a positive or vice versa. So that is why that ends up doing that. This one has a bounce because it has an even. That's always going to happen. Okay. So if we needed some extra points, I'd call that step five. I think we have enough to do what we need to do. Let's go put it all on the graph paper. Okay. Let's scooch down here so we can look at everything. And let me write my function. I wanted to give us enough room, but I gave us more room than we needed. Okay, so now I think we got everything we need. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I always do, is I put on, I kind of go down from step one all the way to step four. The first thing I do is put on my roots. So I had a root at two, at one, and at negative three. I have a y-intercept at negative 12. It's kind of off my paper, just guesstimate. Again, the, the height of the bumps, I don't really, uh, I don't care. Okay. Next thing uh, for step two, uh, two was the fact that our um, left end is going up and our right end is going up kind of like uh, a square would because it's a highest power is a lead term is a four. So two, four, six, eight, the ends always go up or both down. Step three, we kind of found that this is the only part that went down. This part has to go up. Okay, so let's put on all our pieces together. So this was our down piece. This was our up piece. So did we go through this one and through this one but bounce there? See how we made this tiny little parabola? Um, yes, everything uh, is linked together as to what we were expecting to happen, happened. Do I have any questions about number one or number two? Do we have any questions about number one or number two? Okay, let's do uh, two more. Let's take a look at problem number three. We're gonna go down the list. First thing we're gonna find, what are the roots? because it's in factored form. Okay. So x cubed equals zero. Oh, here, I'm sorry, let's do this. Consistently, I hadn't used the powers before, so we don't need to use it again. Okay, so x equals zero, 
2x minus 4 equals 0, 3x minus 2 equals 0, and negative x plus 1 equals 0. Okay. So we've got those four quantities. It's very easy to forget that if there's an x sitting out in front, you have to include it as one of your zeros. So this is just 0. Here we have that front coefficient on the x, so don't forget even if you move that over, you still have to divide by that front coefficient. So here, we would move the 2 and divide by the coefficient. So that's what you end up getting fractions sometimes. Here, we have to move the 1 and divide off the front coefficient. So we have four uh, zeros, four times we hit the x-axis. But let's also find the y-intercept. If we plug in 0, we get 0 times negative 4 squared times negative 2 times 1, which is 0. If you have an x-intercept that's 0, you will indeed get a y-intercept of 0. There's only one y-intercept of this function. Um, so if that happens, you, you get it. At the, you go through the origin. Okay. Now let's talk about our lead term. Our lead term, we have to include a 2x. I'm sorry, an x cubed, a 2x to the second, a 3x, and a negative x to the second. Lots of powers there, lots of powers. We have to account for the powers, okay? Okay, so then you just got to multiply all that crap out. Okay, so x cubed, 2x squared is 4x squared, so that's 4x now to the fifth, times 3x is 12x to the sixth, negative x squared is um, um, positive x squared. You know, you could rewrite this piece as 4x squared and this piece as x squared. However, it helps your brain. So we had 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We had an, uh, a 12x to the eighth when we all add all that stuff together, okay? So it's an even power. Our degree is 8, so both ends are going up. If it ended up being um, uh, an 8 and that front coefficient was negative, it does flip it upside down. We have to remember that rule. Okay. okay. Now let's move to our plus minus chart for this one. It's going to be disgusting, but we can figure it out. Now let's put those numbers down in least to greatest order. We don't have a lot of room, a wiggle room, but we have a little bit. Okay, so our littlest value is 0, then 1. Nope, I'm sorry. How about 2 thirds, Mrs. Hot? Least to greatest order, Mrs. Hot. 2 thirds, 1, and 2. Okay, so we know we hit 0 there. We know that our left end is going up. Okay. Our right end is going up. So let's talk about, in step four, where do we go about and where do we go through? Okay, Where do we have a bounce and where do we go through? This is an odd power. This is an odd power. That, those zeros, so we have to go through. 0 and 2 thirds. We have to go through 0 and 2 thirds. But we have to bounce. In other, whether we make a right side up parabola or an upside down parabola, we have to bounce at uh, 2 and at 1. Okay. So let's keep in mind what's happening here. Let's keep in mind what's happening here. We have to go through zero. So that means if we were positive, this section has to be the opposite because we've got to go through there. So I know for sure that this section is negative. Two thirds I got to go through. So we're in the negative section, we've got to go through it. Now it's going to become positive. But both two and one have a bounce. So let's think if I'm in the positive and I got a bounce, and I got to bounce. Those things are going to stay 
possible. Now, if you're not sure, don't freak out. Just plug in a point. Plug in anything. So between two thirds and one, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, anything like that. Between one and two, 1.5, and you would find their positive values. Okay. So now let's go back to our graph paper and let's put everything together. So we need to hit the X axis. And I'm going to change, could you please make, uh, let's see, how can we count to, to stretch it out a little bit? Um, let's make this two and four. Let's make this negative two and four. I don't care about the heights, really. I mean, at zero, I'm at zero, so yeah, I don't care about the heights. Okay, let me pull this down a little bit so we can see it, okay. 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 So now let's let's jump on in here. Okay. So let's put our points where we hit the x-axis. We hit the x-axis at zero. Here's one. So two thirds is I don't know. We're going to guesstimate. Two thirds. One. We don't have much room, so just guesstimate. Again, this is a rough sketch. And two. I know that my left end goes up and that my right end goes up. I have to go through this point, through this point. Bounce, bounce like a bouncy ball. Our, our bouncy ball bounced twice. It bounced at um, two, one, and then it bounced again at two. So that is what our graph looks like. Weird, strange, I know, but you'll get the hang of it, okay? Do we have any questions about problem number three? Okay, now let's do number four. I'm going to cut this down right off from the start. Now, uh, does anybody notice what's different about number four? What's different? Anybody notice what's different compared to the other first three problems? What's different about number four? Has it been factored? It has not, right? So our first step, we have to factor that. So our rules of factoring are going to be super important. I will review those rules as we go. But one thing you always check for, is there a greatest common factor? And both of those pieces have an X in them. Our lowest power is X to the first, so take it out. And then we're left with X squared minus 1. Does anybody remember how to factor X squared minus 1? There was a special rule for that. Anybody remember what that's called or how to do that? How would you factor x squared minus 1? Think about your algebra tools 2 stuff. How would you factor x squared minus 1? So there's a little rule that says if you have the difference of squares, you can take the square root and split it apart to be x a plus b and a minus b if you started out with a squared minus b squared. So our final factorization is x times the quantity of x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 1. If you get to the point where you have a quadratic, to find the zeros, you can use the, the quadratic formula if you forget the formula. The quadratic formula always solves for the zeros for a quadratic. So, okay. So now let's keep going. So once it's in factored form, remember we've got to find the zeros. So where does x equal 0? x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. That occurs at 0, negative 1, and positive 1. Those are three unique pieces. There are no uh, jumps, or I mean, I'm sorry, there are no bounces for this particular function. But let's think about what the lead term is. Well, let's do the intercept. The uh, You can see that our y-intercept is also zero. Remember I told you earlier, if our x-intercept is zero, our y-intercept is also zero. 
as far as the lead term goes, that's where the unfactored form, uh, it just sits right there and is looking at you. But you can see x times x times x is also x cubed. So our lead term is x cubed. When our degree is 3, uh, the left end goes down and the right end goes up. We go through each one of these zeros. We go through them all because there are no powers at all on our factored form. So if we look at our plus minus chart for that, left end's going down, right end's going up, and we got to go through these. So you'll see a switch over. So we'll have to be a go through, go through. And so uh, our rough sketch is going to look a lot like what you've seen right there. Okay. And if you needed some extra points, feel free to uh, feel free to add any points to your graph. Okay, so let's make our five and negative five. Let's make those negative one and positive one. So let's make those negative one and positive one. Okay, so we hit negative one, zero and positive one. Left end goes up, right end goes down. Through this one, through the origin, through this one, our graph is going to look something like what you see right there. Okay. So that is a little bit about graphing polynomials. Okay. So now we've done that. Please, at this time, submit this into Google Classroom. You are finished, which is awesome. So do that for me. And then, um, um, please, at this time, go to your IMATH calendar. I will do the same. Give me a second here. And you'll notice on the calendar is homework five, five, day one, day two, day three, and day four. Day one notes we took on um, Friday, and day two notes we took right now. So let's just start with day one. Uh, we're going to do a few of these together. So if you could at this time, open it up. And we will do now. We're just starting with uh, day one, question one. And the question says, determine the degree of the function. Now, a degree of the function is your highest powered uh, terms degree. The degree there is four. I don't know what yours is, but please choose appropriately. The highest power on B, don't expect that they are always in descending order. You should always write them in descending order. That doesn't mean they have initially. What's our highest power for me on B? A four. So make sure that you account for the fact they could be all mixed up. Now, let's talk about C for a minute. The seven doesn't have any X's for us to worry about, okay? Uh, if they were asking for end behavior, we got to use it, but they're not. Uh, they're asking for degree. So we've got an x cubed and an x to the sixth. If we were to torture ourselves and foil that all out, we would get an x to the ninth. The degree for me is nine. Okay. So that first question is just asking about degree. Let's take a look at number three. What monomial expression best estimates the function? That would be your lead term with nothing else. 
So in this case, it would be 4x squared. Using your answer to part one, determine the end behavior. So this is where, what is a 4x squared doing? Well, if this is even, and if this is positive, it acts like a parabola. So the left end is going to positive infinity. The right end is also going upward to positive infinity, okay? So, I'm sorry, this uh, notation, the first, that's your right end, that's your left end. So this, please note, that is what is the right end doing if X is positive. This is what is your left end doing. This is right, this is left. So be careful with that, okay? And then finally, let's do B here. Uh, our lead term, let's pull that out. This is acting like negative 0.7x cubed, that, that highest power term. So what happens to as we go to the right? Well, when we have a negative 0.7x cubed, it's a cubic turned upside down. So the left end goes up and the right end goes down. Now, this is the right end, so it's going downward. We mark that with negative infinity. This is our left end. Left is always negative infinity. Uh, the left end is going upward to positive infinity. If worse comes to worse, you can always open up Desmos. What's the graph doing? You could type in the entire graph and that would tell you what your ends are doing. Okay. Let's jump around a little bit. Let me see what we got here. That's all about end behavior. Let's take a look at question seven. Question seven. So we've got this function. The roots are very easy when it's in factored form. This one gives you positive three, positive five, and negative eight. It probably wants them in uh, with a list with commas between them. So I'm going to put three comma five comma negative eight. What is the lead term? Well, if I just took out the x's only and multiplied them together, so in this case that would be x cubed. As x increases without bounds, so that's going to positive infinity, the x cubed uh, um, would also go up. It would increase without bound. As the x decreases or becomes negative without bound, what does the function do? It would also become negative uh, decreasing without bound. Okay, So that's what they're looking for there. And then let's see if there's anything different down the end. Use algebra to find the roots. What is on what intervals? Okay, let's do this one, and then we'll talk about day two's homework. So I'm going to write out the function. And um, having a sheet of paper as you do this is probably going to be helpful. The roots are just going to be, for me, uh, positive 3 and uh, negative 6. So list them with a comma. Now, in what intervals is it positive? Okay, so let's just think for a minute. I'm going to draw a very rough sketch. Again, I don't, you'll notice it's not <laughs> really to scale. I don't care. Okay. My function is an x cubed function. Uh, it's got three x's total. So the left end has to go down. The right end has to go up. We had to go uh, a bounce at negative six and through positive three, okay? So if we look at what sections of the graph are negative, everything is, there's kind of two sections where it's negative and only one section where it's above the x-axis. So on the intervals from negative infinity up to but not including negative six because zero is not negative. And then again, anywhere between six and three 
it's also under the x-axis. It's negative. The only interval where, oh, I'm sorry, that's, that says the word's positive, Mrs. Hot. I'm just going to cut this uh, and put it down here. I'm sorry. This is hot. I'm trying to read and talk. And I, uh, anyway, now where is the function positive? The, the function is only positive on this little leg right here from an x value of 3 to an x value of a forever. It's positive. So this would be from 3 to forever. Okay. So the intervals they're discussing, those are the x values where this happens. So that is what they want there. I'm sorry, what did I, oh, okay, see how, I'm sorry, I forgot the negative there. Let me type a negative there, if it lets me, there we go, that should be good now. Yep, okay, so um, that is question number 10 from homework day one, okay, so now at this time, go back to your calendar let's just uh tap on homework day two there's not a lot of questions here so we'll do the first one um, it says uh for the function which of the following are true okay so in question a we have a lead term of 8x cubed so the left end's going down and the right end's going up so as x goes to negative infinity um, to the left, yeah, yeah, the function is going to uh, negative infinity, going down. And then as x goes to positive infinity, the function is going up. Now, b, we have some more math to do. Make a pass and I'll start it for you. Um, B, we have some math to do. The lead term here is going to be negative 6. You always include any front x or coefficient or both. Uh, times x, times x, or negative 6x squared. Both ends are going to go downward because we flipped over that even power. So uh, as we go to the left, we're going down. That's what that one says. As we go to the right, we're going down. That's what that one says. So left always is indicated by x going to negative infinity. Uh, right is always indicated at x going to positive infinity. That you just have to memorize. And then the other thing then should fall into play because of the y uh, or the lead term. Okay. And then finally, c here, our lead term is negative x cubed. So uh, the left end it's going to be a cubic flipped upside down. The left end is going to go up. The right end is going to go down. So the left end is going to go up. That's what that one says. The right end is going to go down. That's what that one says. Okay. So that is a little bit about uh, that lead term and end behavior. Um, and then if there's any more you're stuck on, we'll, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. There you go.